All right, ladies and gentlemen, Baron here. So now we're going to be navigating the Howl Cave Network. There are three entrances, three shines, and a lot of herbs inside. Now the most easily to find entrance, I think, is the one on the eastern side of Kappa Island. Excuse me, the western side of Kappa Island, where is the beach entrance. Now there's two entrances relatively close, and we'll see that. So once you go in, and as I've done in the previous cave exploration video for the waterfall cave, I'm in solo mode and I pressed F4, which pauses time as well as pauses the lighting. So there's one relatively easily accessible herb at the entrance to the beach side. Now herbs take a while to regenerate, so that is pretty easy to get. Here's the forest entrance. This one's a little more difficult to find if you're not on the beach you know and you're coming in from the forest but there are definitely two entrances right here and then you could say the other one's kind of an exit since you have to go through water and you won't be able to bring a torch in so here are the two entrances you basically get up to the forest entrance and then you take a right and then you are entering the howl cave system which can be very confusing. So here, it's a little bit of a kind of a, a rock stair steps downwards. Here you have kind of a jump, but when going the other way, you've got this nice little ramp, you can get up and boom, you're back up and you can go out either the forest or the beach side entrance. Here's a giant lake to your left, and you're gonna go this way a nice quick jump. Now keep in mind when going the other way you can extinguish your torch right about there. So there's a nice little sweet spot and there's a little bit of you know that that little sliding see right there? Torch would have been out. It's tricky. You gotta be very careful when spelunking because you don't want to lose your torches. So here if you go right there's an herb. There's also access to a lot of rocks over here. But there's really nowhere you can go. So it's kind of a dead end. You can't really jump from over there. We can try it real quick. Boom. Torch is out. You're dead. You're trying to drown yourself because these caves in multiplayer, since you can't pause time, would be your torch is extinguished and you're really just trying to be like, well, I'm stuck in a giant cave network. So that is a false way. You could jump over that way, but we'll go back to the beginning just to show you the right way to go. This kind of being a dead end, nothing really to see here. So that's the single herb. And then that's where we came in. That's where the forest and the beach entrance are. Here's the first fork, you take the left fork. Here's where we jumped over. You could jump the other way, but as said previously, there's really nowhere to go. Now here's the rock wall. Once you get over this way, you can't get back. Although I have seen a few people, and I've done it myself, where you kind of glitch jump it's very difficult to do and you can't count on it. You could basically spend all day starving to death trying to jump over this rock wall. So this being the rock wall is another kind of reference point. Once you drop down, you can see how you can't really jump up. Now we've glitched up before, um, and even over here, you can't really get up. Even though it kind of looks short, you can't get up there. So once you drop down, you cannot get up this way. Now we're gonna go here. There's kind of this uh, landmark stone here. You can get over here. So if you take the leftward fork, it will take you basically further down and towards the water exit. But we're not gonna go that way just yet. We wanna take the rightward fork and find one of the shrines. So here, you can see that there's a lot of kind of very shallow spots. You go this way.
truth be told, I think I'm lost a little bit. Actually, we're approaching one of the shrines. Here we have our first Akum Bokum Shrine and six herbs around it. So not bad. Now to get back, we'd simply go the same way we came. There's kind of this false cave with a little lake over there. And can you imagine you're doing this with torches so you can't really see very well. It's very easy to get lost. Over here you have another one of those little K, uh, lake views. There's only one way to go really. Don't want to put out your torch. It's basically you don't want to submerge yourself. Got to find that sweet spot. It's tricky. Basically here is the sweet spot where you jump. So now we'll be heading back. All right, so here you go back and we're gonna run into a landmark, which is easy. If you kept running, you'd run into the rock wall. You wouldn't miss this spot, you'd be like, okay. So I realized that if I take that rightward fork, it leads me to the shrine. If I take a leftward fork, it'll take me to another shrine or two and then an exit, right? Now going back, there's actually two th things because there's another shrine over here. So here, there's the rock wall. You'd be coming this way. If you go right and then right again, it'll take you to that back shrine. If you take the right path and then continue to go straight, you'll find a different shrine. And these are all shallow areas. The swimming kind of action doesn't get triggered here go up a little more and then you got to do a bit of rock jumping here in order to get to that one over there now this is the riskiest shrine to get because it's the easiest to fall into the water but there's a sweet little spot right here you can barely see it and I don't know what it really look like but I don't think you can walk see right there that little swimming action your torch just went out but if you go to the edge here very carefully and then jump, you're good. Now coming back, it's even more difficult because there's not that telltale little nook. But you basically have to go to the very end. This is the riskiest shrine. See right there? Jump too early, torch is out. So you can kind of see what it looks like underwater. And that fish is looking like an eel. Anyway, so our hunger's getting a bit so we're gonna have to continue on. But anyway, you can go this way and you get to this shrine, which if you come with a number of people, you could have one guy over there holding a torch, you guys drop your torches, you come over here, you hit this shrine and you could swim over there. But we're gonna do it as if you have to walk back. So we'll make our way back. We just got that other shrine that was two out of three shrines. Now we gotta get over there. This is not the way to go, no place to jump. So you find this little spot, you find that little sweet spot, and you jump and you pray. Because if you get it wrong, your torch is out and you're gonna die. Yep. So, at the rock wall, we took, there's two uh, shrines when you get to this little point over there's a shrine and straight ahead and to the left is a shrine so to get out we hit here and we go left now that you can walk along it it's tricky and you may just want to do a jump for insurance so there those two herbs is what kind of points out where that shrine is so we're gonna head out and now we're gonna be heading towards the river entrance it's basically an exit and this is the easiest shrine to find and get to without really having to worry about losing your torch. There's also seven herbs around it. This would be the third shrine. 
so you could get a, a whopping 60 experience. Over here is one of those little lake views, so it's not a real way out. You continue out with your 60 experience. An herb right there, relatively accessible. And here is a little bit of a cliff climb. And then we're going to be able to exit. Now this drops us out in the river. So you can see you can't, there's no way to get in here without extinguishing a torch that you would have brought in. So you'd swim out and now you're kind of in the lake. And if you were to follow this river down, it would take you to the waterfall cave, which we viewed previously. So three shrines, a lot of herbs um, and it's very risky. One or two of those shrines are extremely risky to go for, but high risk, high reward. You could get 60 experience within a matter of five to 10 minutes of spelunking. And if you do this in solo mode, you can really kind of learn the cave systems and get a feel and do these practice runs of how to get there to those shrines because you're gonna need 100 experience to ride a Staracosaurus, 150 experience to ride an Ankylosaurus, and 200 experience to run a Carnotaurus. Experience obviously increase the longer you're in a game, and you get 20% of the experience of any enemies that you kill, which kind of encourages tribal warfare and PvP. But anyway, that was the Howl Cave system. It's pretty vast, um, lots of shrines in there. Three out of the five shrines that are on the island. The first one being in the waterfall cave, three being in the howl cave, and the final fifth one being in the lava cave, which is what we're going to show next. So stay tuned for that. If you haven't already, for the love of games, subscribe. Make sure to give this video some love, and I thank y'all for watching. My name is Baron, and I'm going to go explore the lava cave. The magical healing herbs, which allow you to kill and then ride the dinosaurs and revive them, as well as revive your teammates. And over here you're gonna find the shrine as well as one two three four five six seven herbs another acum bocum shrine now what i found coolest is um in this cave you're gonna see these paint uh this painting that in the dark with a torch they glow golden 